Hello everybody, welcome to your art activity for this week. And inspired by what year one have been learning about as they've been exploring landscapes and colour, we're going to be looking at the work of an Austrian born artist called Friedensreich Hunterwasser. It's quite a mouthful. Friedensreich Hunterwasser. Mr. Hunterwasser was born in 1928 in Vienna in Austria and lived up until the year 2000 um, and passed away in New Zealand which is where he had relocated to in his later years to design and continue to create art. Now he was both an artist, a painter and an architect. I'm going to be showing you examples of some of his fascinatingly undulating buildings which are located across Europe um, and also in New Zealand. Um, but what is really key about his art is his message, what he's trying to get across. Hunter Vassar was concerned about the impact of pollution. Hunter Vassar was particularly concerned about the impact humans were having on their environments. This is definitely not something that's new to us today in 2021. Discussion about our impact and the problems we have caused is everywhere and indeed is the focus of the COP26 conference. But what was unique to um, Hunterwasser at the time was the fact that not many other artists were speaking up quite as vociferously, quite as strongly as he was. His artwork is infused with this idea of environmental care and protection. And I'm going to be explaining that as we look in further detail at some of his artworks. Friedensreich Hunterwasser was an Austrian artist who became known for designing buildings, but he also created stamps, he painted, he designed posters and made other works. He was born in Vienna as Friedrich Stowasser. His mother Elsa was Jewish, so the Second World War was a difficult time for the family in Austria. Hunterwasser studied briefly at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna, but when his money ran out, he started to travel a lot. He began to develop his own style, and in 1952, he exhibited his paintings for the first time. Hunter Vasser had a very lively imagination. His art was unruly, it was wild and it was chaotic. It was a colour frenzy. In his work, as you can see here, he used spirals and curved organic forms, wavy lines, bright colours and a sense of the individual, the personal. He wanted humans to live peacefully with nature, where there were no straight lines. Once he even called straight lines, something cowardly, drawn with a ruler, without thought or feeling. You can understand how someone who grew up under an oppressive and violent regime would be against the rigidity of straight lines, associated with the geometric forms of marching army battalions. Colour is a large part of Hunter Vassar's art. He didn't select colours for any special significance. Instead, he used bright, fierce, burning colours and combined colours to form patterns. But notice above all how he breaks the landscape down into simplified and playful shapes and forms and how the human body and face is painted as if within, a part of, the landscape itself. Let's look at the boy with the green hair here. Hunter Vassar shows a bald-headed man with multiple eyes and mouths. His head is transformed into a spiralling green and yellow field or pasture split by a splicing red wedge that suggests a tree trunk. Atop the pasture sits three buildings seemingly sprouting from his head. Architecture was a real passion of his. He hated the way most buildings had straight lines and angles. Hunter Vassar 
felt that buildings should fit and represent those who lived inside them, those humans. So his building designs use natural forms and often fit around nature rather than trying to bend nature to fit them. In the Hunterwasser House, an apartment building in Vienna, Austria, the floors aren't flat and even. They ripple. Yes, they ripple like rivers. The artist believed in several key ideas. Firstly, the right of each person to a window. He said, someone who lives in an apartment must have the right to lean out of their window and to decorate the outer walls as it suits them as far as their arm can reach so that one can see at a distance that a person as an individual being is living there. He believed that roofs should be grass or have trees. He liked to put golden onions on the tops of roofs to make the residents feel like kings, to raise them above ordinary masses. And he believed that children should be allowed to scribble on walls. Now, Hunter Vassar's campaign posters are equally powerful. Here you can see his conservationist message, which sings loud and clear. In the early 70s, when governments were certainly not listening in the way they are starting to now, he was speaking about environmental concerns, about the impact of human pollution on our environment. In 1975, Hunter Vassar left Europe and went to live in a small town called Kawakawa in New Zealand, where he could live pretty self-sufficiently. And as well as designing the most incredible public toilets there... The artist bought several properties and joined them together to give himself enough access to nature. He built solar panels and a water purification plant and grew his own food. He lived and designed there until he died in the year 2000. His philosophy of sustainability, his desire to warn of the dangers of human pollution through his art, these were not widespread at the time. So Hunter Vassar was ahead of his time as environmental artist. And that's why he's so fascinating. For your art homework this week, I would like you to create a landscape painting or oil pastel study or pencil line study. It doesn't matter what medium you use, but I'd be really interested to see how you think about yourself in a place that's special to you somewhere that you feel safe, some that you feel inspired, some that you feel just happy to be. A portrait of yourself within a landscape that's special to you, within a place that's special to you, in the style of Hunter Vassar. So it might be that you incorporate just your face in the way that he did with a big yellow face within the hills. It might be that you think about the man with the green hair, so you do a kind of big full body study with the top down and you've actually got that place within your body, on your skin, on your hair, in your clothes. It doesn't matter, I'm just really interested to see how you represent yourself in, within, linked within a place that you feel connected to. Okay? Can't wait to see how these turn out, everybody. And do please, please share your work at this email address. As ever, I love sharing all of your incredible outcomes in our online art gallery. Um, and we want to keep those come and keep that gallery filled um, and full of inspiration for all of you out there. Also, this week, you might notice new on our website, we've got a new artist interview film with the fascinating Brendan Jameson, a sculptor from Northern Ireland, um, who works with lots of different mediums and represents lots of different things. He's interested in everything from sugar cube sculptures to digger claws to spacemen. Check out his video and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and rest of your week. Bye bye everybody!